While we may think of ourselves as advanced after catching a glimpse of the eight planets of our solar system and their 200 moons, we really have little idea of what's out there. So much so that there's speculation that there might be one more planet in our solar system. Scientists call it Planet X or Planet 9. This undiscovered world could be hidden way out past Neptune. Asteroids and dwarf planets in this area have weirdly unexplained altered orbits, and Planet X may be the reason. Tales of this mysterious planet began over a hundred years ago with a man called Percival Lowell. Lowell had a great love of space. And aside from having an impressive mustache, he was also super rich. Ooh, that lucky guy. He used his riches to build an observatory in Arizona. He then dedicated it to study the odd motions of Uranus and Neptune. Their gravitational pulls are slower than those of all the other planets in our solar system. Almost as if there is a giant hidden object pulling them off course. In 1906, Lowell theorized that there could be another planet out beyond Neptune. It probably caused those strange cosmic happenings. The man called this potential space body Planet X. In 1930, Pluto was discovered by Clyde Tombaugh at Lowell's very own observatory. It finally looked like people had an explanation for the weird orbital patterns. Lowell's team was on cloud 9 after the discovery, but their celebrations were short-lived. Soon, they found out that Pluto is way too small to be having that much of an effect on the surrounding planets. And it was also too far away from them. So it was back to the drawing board. Planet X, if it exists, is 10 times the size of Earth and 4 times its radius. It would take at least 10,000 years for the planet to orbit the Sun and it would sit over 200 times further out than our home planet. That's 600 astronomical units from the center of the solar system. FYI, an astronomical unit equals the distance between the Earth and the Sun. But while that sounds super far away, it's actually not. The distance between space bodies is usually measured in light years, and an astronomical unit is a much smaller unit of measurement. For context, the most distant thing detected from Earth is the galaxy GNZ11. Cute name, huh? It sits a staggering 32 billion light years away. Even so, our telescopes can still spot it. And just one light year is the same as 63,241 astronomical units. Woo! So, if our tech can detect a galaxy that's so far away, how have we not been able to uncover Planet X? Well, it's probably down to the fact that it might not even exist. The theory of Planet X was pretty much debunked back in 1989. It was discovered that the mysterious gravitational pulls of Neptune had been a red herring all along. Scientists had massively misjudged just how big Neptune actually was. Voyager 2 visited the planet and discovered its actual size. This new info explained the odd gravitational pulls meaning they weren't being caused by the so-called Planet X. But that's not where our investigation ends, as the hypothetical ninth planet once again popped up around 10 years ago. While the evidence behind Lowell's theory was wrong, his belief in Planet X may not have been. In 2015, astronomers Michael Brown and Konstantin Batigin discovered that there were, in fact, unexplained gravitational forces at play past Neptune. There are satellites that orbit planets perpendicularly, which doesn't happen anywhere else in our solar system. There's also clusters of asteroids that move in very specific ways, so specific that it's basically impossible that it could be random. Even weirder, there are satellites that travel in completely opposite direction to the Sun, unlike most other things in the solar system. A planetoid called Sedna also appears to be being pulled towards something, along with six others, all going in the same direction. And Brown and Batigen aren't just any other stargazers. They're both well-respected scientists at the top of their game. Konstantin Batigen has been named in Forbes as one of 30 scientists who are changing the world. And Mike Brown was the man who rebranded Pluto as a dwarf planet. This means that when these guys say something, it's usually pretty legit, and you should probably listen. But the only way we can really prove Planet X exists is to actually find it. 
and this has turned out to be pretty difficult. To locate the planet, we'd need to use a method called transit photometry. This is basically where we monitor a whole bunch of stars for a long time and look out for any dips in the light they give off. These dips would likely be caused by a planet getting in the way. And ta-da! The existence of Planet X could be proved. But for this method to work, Earth, the new planet, and the Sun all have to be perfectly aligned. These circumstances are pretty rare. And if these conditions don't exist, the dip in light won't happen. Plus, this method would only really work with planets that are closer to the Sun than our Earth. That's Venus and Mercury. For anything past Earth, this technique is pretty much useless. Another technique we could use is to find the potential planet through a good old-fashioned telescope. But as you can imagine, that's insanely tricky. The furthest object that we've found in our solar system is a planetoid, appropriately named, far, far out. But that's only 140 AU away from the Sun. That's only like a quarter of the way to Planet X. We can only see an object because of its brightness. The Sun is very visible to us because it emits huge amounts of light. And we can see the Moon because it reflects the Sun's light. Technically, the Moon has no right to appear brighter than everything else in the night sky. It only seems brighter because we're closer to it. The farther away an object is, the less bright it appears to us. The major issue with seeing the theoretical Planet X is that all objects in our solar system get their light from the Sun. They reflect sunlight, and that's why we can see them. Given how far away from the Sun Planet X might be, it makes it nearly impossible to see. And because of its really dim light, to view it, we would require perfect weather conditions as well as an extremely strong telescope. But Brown and Badigen have found the perfect one. The Subaru Telescope is located at the top of a dormant volcano in Hawaii. It's huge and is capable of capturing even the weakest light from distant space objects. The issue that we need to figure out is where to point it. Without knowing where Planet X actually is, this basically turns things into a giant guessing game. There are also only around three nights every year when the conditions are clear enough to see the hypothetical Planet X. It's difficult, but not impossible. And still, most astronomers have called it a day and agreed that Planet X doesn't exist, stating that it's just a common myth. The most widespread explanation for the weird gravitational pulls is that there's a tiny black hole in our solar system. It's pulling the planets toward us. But don't worry, they say it's not big enough to actually munch on a planet. So Earth is all good, for now. The issue with the black hole theory is that, once again, it's almost impossible for us to track the thing down. While its mass could be as great as that of Planet X, the hole itself would be squished down to the size of an orange. Telescopes wouldn't be of any use. To find it, people would have to look for the gamma rays sent off by objects as they fall into the black hole. Another way we could find it is to release hundreds of tiny spacecraft. They would pass close enough to the hypothetical hole, and when they got pulled toward it, we could probably detect it. But don't count out Brown and Batigen's theory. It's still being documented by NASA. And until we find unmistakable evidence to prove any theories, Planet X might still be out there. Our solar system might have some more planets up its sleeve. We know about eight official planets, but they're not the only ones that survived the chaotic formation of our solar system 4.5 billion years ago. Astronomers say there are three categories of planets in our solar system. We're in the first one, the four rocky inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, that peacefully orbit the Sun. They're located within the main asteroid belt that separates Mars from Jupiter, which is in category number two. That one's a group of planets in the outer solar system, the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets have huge amounts of ice and gas around what scientists believe to be their rocky cores. The third group lies beyond the area where our local planets are, somewhere further than Neptune. It's the realm where you'll find dwarf planets such as Pluto, Eris, and Sedna, and many smaller space bodies like comets. 
But new findings say there could be something else lurking in the dark, besides dwarf planets and tiny space bodies. Maybe even a new planet! Models scientists made say that our solar system used to have one or more rocky planets, the size of Mars or Earth. Over time, these rocky wanderers interacted with the wide gravity fields of our gas giants. This kicked them into a far-out orbit, away from the neighborhood. The question is, if one of those Mars-sized planets survived and could really be somewhere out there. Scientists have made simulations to see what potentially happened. These showed that in half of such cases where planets interact with the gravity of gas giants, they get ejected into interstellar space. In the remaining half, there's this one rogue planet left in an orbit similar to the ones the Kuiper Belt objects are following. There's only one thing left to do now. Find it. Astronomers found the loneliest planet in the universe. They were trying to find distant brown dwarf stars, or failed stars, ones that never become massive enough to start shining. Stars are born with big masses, which means they also have strong self-gravity. The star squeezes in on itself. That causes high internal temperatures and enables the star to shine. But instead, they found a lonely wanderer, CFBD SIR 2149. The planet is between 50 and 120 million years old and has a surface temperature of 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Compared to stars, that's cold. At first, scientists thought it could be a brown dwarf star, but in that case, it would be way older. This starless planet floats around through space, passing only 130 light years away from our planet. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is 100,000 light years wide, so that's relatively close. The lonely traveler is actually a gas giant, four to seven times bigger than Jupiter. Maybe it was kicked out from its own solar system because of gravitational forces, or getting into another planet's orbit, or it was formed away from its parent star. Far beyond Pluto, on the edge of our solar system, there's a space body about as big as Pluto, but a little bit colder and way denser. It's probably a big rocky body covered in a thin icy mantle. It's the dwarf planet Eris. Both Pluto and Eris occupy the Kuiper Belt, which is the distant ring of frigid space bodies that lies beyond Neptune. A day there lasts 25.9 hours, pretty similar to Earth. But Eris circles our sun in the distance three times farther than Pluto, which means its year is pretty long, 557 Earth years. Eris has a bright, icy surface. It's one of the most reflective bodies in our solar system. It bounces back more than 95% of the light that strikes it. Somewhere out there, even farther, there's a super Saturn, J1407b, much larger than Jupiter or Saturn. It's an exoplanet, which means a planet that orbits a star other than our Sun. Super Saturn is 434 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Centaurus. It's the only exoplanet we know about with rings similar to Saturn. It actually has a huge ring system, 200 times bigger than Saturn's rings. There are more than 30 rings, each of them tens of millions of miles in diameter. There are gaps in the rings, which means there could be some interesting satellites, exomoons, around. If this super Saturn could swap places with our regular Saturn, its rings would absolutely dominate our sky. You could look up and easily see them. The view would be amazing, because they would appear much bigger than a full moon. Scientists have found thousands of planets outside of our solar system. Some are dense as iron, while others are airy and light. And then there's the water world, GJ1214b, a steamy world, bigger than Earth and smaller than Uranus, 40 light years away from us in the constellation of Ophiuchus. It's a watery planet surrounded by a thick atmosphere, 2.7 times Earth's diameter and almost seven times heavier than our home planet. It was most likely formed somewhere farther from its star, where there was plenty of water ice, but later migrated to where it is today. Its surface temperature is 440 degrees Fahrenheit, which is too hot to host life like on Earth. It also has much less rock and much more water than our planet. Imagine a planet with no land, but only endless oceans covering all of its surface. High pressures and temperatures would form things like superfluid water or hot ice some pretty exotic materials that we can't see on our planet. 
Gliese 436b. It's a Neptune-sized exoplanet 30 light-years away from our planet in the constellation of Leo. It makes one full orbit around its star in a little more than two days. This planet defies the laws of physics. It orbits its star, Gliese 436, which is smaller, cooler, and less luminous than our Sun, at a distance 15 times closer than Mercury is to the Sun. When we typically think of ice, we picture a frozen cube. But this planet has an icy surface, even though the temperature there is 980 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature is way above the melting point, but the ice remains solid and burning hot. This happens because of very strong gravity. It compresses the water vapor in the atmosphere into solid ice. The pressure here doesn't allow the ice to melt, no matter how hot the surface is. Now imagine being on a mysterious planet and it suddenly starts raining sapphires and rubies. One distant exoplanet, Hat P7b, a gas giant 1,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Cygnus and 16 times bigger, has specific weather and pretty violent storms. Rubies and sapphires are scattered across the planet when it's raining. On the planet's night side, there's a high amount of corundum in the atmosphere. And corundum is what mineral gems such as sapphires and rubies are made of. Clouds of corundum give such an amazing view. The planet is plagued by severe winds that often turn into powerful storms that push huge masses of those clouds across the planet. Although the planet is uninhabitable, it would certainly be cool to come there and pick up some gems. Still, the weather is pretty wild. Plus, the temperatures are over 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. By comparison, Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, and its temperature is only 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Looking over the expanse of space, you can see a beautiful little blue dot in the endless darkness. It's an exoplanet, HD 189733b, that lies 63 light years from us in the constellation of Volpecula. But it's way hotter and larger than our planet, around the size of Jupiter, and it completes its orbit around its host star in only 2.2 Earth days. That orbit is so close that the planet is most likely tidally locked. That means it's always showing only one face to its star, like our moon always shows one side to Earth. The weather here is crazy. The winds blow at up to 5,400 miles per hour, which is seven times the speed of sound. The fastest wind on Earth only hit the mark of 230 miles per hour. And it gets better. The rain here is not made of water, but of molten glass. Clouds are made of silicate atoms and particles. They are the key element that gives the planet its cobalt blue color, not the reflection of oceans, which is the case with Earth. Earth used to be purple. Today, even when you look at our planet from space, you see a lot of green. The green we see in nature is there because of photosynthesis, the process where plants transform energy coming from the sun into energy they need to live and to produce oxygen for us. The main part of the process that gives plants the green color is the chlorophyll pigment. A long time ago, instead of chlorophyll, there was a molecule called retinol. Its pigments absorb yellow and green light and turn it into red and blue. So the Earth was more purple. And then there's a pink planet, GJ504b, far away from us, in the Virgo constellation, four times more massive than Jupiter. It's a newly formed exoplanet, around 160 million years old. By comparison, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. If we could go there, we would see an incredible world that glows from the heat of its formation. Everything around you would be colored magenta. An exoplanet is any planet inside our solar system. Some of them are free-floating. Those are called rogue planets. They move around the galactic center. Others orbit their host star, or two. For the first time, astronomers discovered exoplanets in the 1990s. Since then, scientists have found thousands of them. And now, you can sneak a peek too. Spoiler alert, some exoplanets are pretty bizarre. Other resemble our home planet and could probably support life. The closest to Earth exoplanet is Proxima Centauri b. It's a mere 4.2 light years away from Earth. Recently, astronomers have found out that this world might resemble Earth even more than previously thought. It's only 17% more massive than our home planet. It orbits a star that is dimmer and less massive than the Sun. Proxima Centauri b is in the middle of the star's habitable zone. 
This means that chances are liquid water and life might exist on the planet. It looks like the exoplanet is tidally locked with its parent star. This means one of its sides faces the star at all times, and the other is always in the darkness. Scientists haven't figured out yet whether the planet has an atmosphere. It's traveling too close to its star and completes one orbit within 11 Earth days. The radiation from the star might be pulling the planet's air away. If this is the case, Proxima Centauri b isn't likely to have liquid water on its surface. Gleiss 832c is 16 light years away from Earth. In the cosmic scheme of things, it's a stone's throw away. This exoplanet is five times as massive as Earth and travels much closer to its parent star. That's why a year on this planet lasts a mere 36 days. But since this star is a red dwarf, much cooler and dimmer than the Sun, Gliese 832c gets as much light and heat as our planet does. At the same time, it's still unclear if Gliese 832c is similar to Earth. It probably has a much thicker atmosphere that creates a runaway greenhouse effect. This phenomenon occurs when a planet absorbs more heat from its host star than it can release back into space. This means that Gliese 832c is more likely to resemble scorching hot Venus rather than relatively cool Earth. Another Earth-like planet, TOI 700d, is 100 light years away from us in the constellation Dorado. It orbits a small and rather cool dwarf star that is about 40% of the mass and size of the Sun. Its surface temperature is half as high as that of our star. The outermost planet, which is the very TOI 700d, is almost the size of Earth. It also sits in the habitable zone of its parent star. No flares from TOI 700 reach the planet. This increases the chances of the exoplanet being habitable. This means it can potentially develop and maintain life. Scientists don't know for sure the exact conditions on the surface of the planet. But one of the computer simulations they've created shows a planet covered with an ocean. It has a very dense atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Astronomers think a similar atmosphere surrounded Mars when it was a young planet. But another 3D model shows TOI 700d as an all-land, cloudless world. That's what our Earth would probably look like if it wasn't covered with oceans. Winds on TOI 700d move away from the night side of the planet and meet in the area that directly faces the star. There is an exoplanet that stands out among the rest because of its awesome magenta color. You can find this world in the Virgo constellation. The planet is called Gliese 504b. The distance between this planet and its parent star is nine times the distance between the Sun and Jupiter. The planet formed relatively recently and is still glowing with heat. That's why its surface looks pinkish. Just 20 light years away from the Sun, which isn't such a great distance when we talk about space, a bizarre rogue planet is roaming our home Milky Way galaxy. But even though this planet doesn't orbit any star, it still has an incredibly powerful magnetic field. It's 4 million times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. The exoplanet also produces amazing auroras. When it was discovered in 2016, astronomers were almost sure they had detected a brown dwarf, which is an object too large to be a planet and too small to be a star. But later, scientists received proof that the space object wasn't big enough to be a brown dwarf. The planet sure is a mammoth among its peers. It's 1.2 times as wide as the largest planet of the solar system, Jupiter, and more than 12 times as heavy. Astronomers think the exceptional strong magnetic field helps the planet produce the auroras. But the most curious thing is that they're generated in a different way than auroras on Earth. It might be because the exoplanet's moon helps the planet create these light shows. If you travel 20,000 light years away from Earth, you'd come close to a red dwarf in the Sagittarius constellation. Such stars are very cool and small. Quite far away from this cold star, there's a planet. The distance between this world and its host star is so great that the planet receives very little heat. It's one of the coldest planets ever detected. 
the average surface temperature on the planet is lower than negative 360 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why the entire planet is covered with a thick layer of ice. If you stepped onto its surface, you'd see nothing but glaciers, plains, and mountains of ice. And still, astronomers claim life might exist deep beneath the frozen surface. All because the core of the planet is likely to generate enough heat to melt some of its inner ice. In this case, there would be an enormous subsurface ocean, maybe even swarming with bizarre life forms on the planet. One of the oldest exoplanets we know about is PCR B162026b. It's about 12.7 billion years old. It's almost three times as old as Earth, which appeared 4.5 billion years ago. This also means that the Genesis planet formed only about 1 billion years after the Big Bang. The planet is so old that its two parent stars have had enough time to evolve into a white dwarf and a pulsar, making almost 100 revolutions per second. Sunrises on this planet must look awesome! I bet the next exoplanet isn't like any other you might have seen before. It's often called Super Saturn, or Saturn on steroids. That's because J1407b has a colossal system of rings. They're 640 times as large as those of Saturn. The bizarre world is 434 light years away from Earth. It's the only planet we know about that has rings similar to Saturn's. If you moved J1407b to our solar system and replaced Saturn with it, its rings would look many times larger than a full moon. Astronomers have noticed a gap halfway through the planet's rings. The chances are high that an exomoon the size of Mars orbits the planet somewhere within this gap. If you lived on this moon, you'd have an awesome view every time you looked up into the sky. This exoplanet, called WASP-12b, munches on the light coming from its star. It's one of the darkest worlds people know about. All because its day side consumes light rather than reflects it back into space. The planet is giant, twice the size of Jupiter, and it traps more than 94% of the light that reaches its atmosphere. This is likely to be the main reason for the insane temperatures on the surface of the planet. They can rise up to 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. It's almost half as hot as the surface of the Sun. WASP-12b travels so close to its host star that it needs just one day to complete one orbit. Its night side isn't as hot as the day side, a mere 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of this difference in temperature, water vapor and clouds gather above the surface of the planet. From time to time, swirls of material from the planet's superheated atmosphere spill onto its star. About 4,000 light years away from Earth, there's an exoplanet that might be one enormous diamond. It's five times the size of our planet, but needs only two hours and ten minutes to orbit its parent star. It's a pulsar rotating at a rate of 10,000 times a minute. The planet is denser than any other we've discovered so far. It consists mostly of carbon, which is so dense that astronomers think it might be crystalline. If it was true, it could mean that at least some part of the planet is diamond. On WASP-76b, it rains iron on the night side of the planet, and the temperature on the daytime side rises up to 4,300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to vaporize most metals. This exoplanet is a bit smaller than Jupiter and located 640 light years away from Earth. Such terrifying weather conditions in this world are caused by its unusual orbit. The distance between WASP-76b and its parent star is 10 times shorter than the distance between Mercury and the Sun. That's why the star and the huge planet are tidally locked. One side of WASP-76b always faces the star, and the other side is always pitch black. This bright blue exoplanet sits 62 years away from Earth. A bit larger than Jupiter, it looks calm and peaceful. Its blue color might remind you of our home planet. But this familiar appearance conceals the planet's horrifying nature. The beautiful hue comes from silicate atoms and particles that make up the atmosphere. 
But the wind speed on the planet can reach 5,400 miles per hour. That's seven times the speed of sound. The temperature there can rise up to 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. But this isn't the worst. In this bizarre world, it rains glass, sideways. So it's probably not the place where you'd like to spend your vacation.